It's high summer in the UK and that means it's time for everyone to trim their hedges. <laughs> I'm sorry there's a bit of noise in the background. It's been unusually dry this year so far, actually for most of the year. And we've just entered a period when it's also got pretty warm and there's a lot of vegetables in the ground. More is growing than I have water to give them to you and I expect quite a few of you will be in the same situation. So with that context, how do you decide which plants most benefit from being watered? And I'm sharing with you the priorities I use, how I judge it, like salad plants, leafy plants where we are eating watery leaves will repay you very quickly for all the water you can give them because 99% of that harvest is in fact water and another one in that category is celery which <laughs> likes to live in a swamp so you know just keep it as moist as possible then another category of plants of vegetables that loves water is plants that are cropping now so that's beans small beans dwarf beans and tall beans and cucumbers, there's one here for example, ridge cucumber, which gave its first crop only two days ago and already it's fruiting again. So I'm watering these every couple of days. And tomatoes is another one in that category. And in a more general way of looking at plants, uh, whether or not they're leafy or fruiting, is the stage of life. So when we put plants in the ground, that's a critical moment. And often it's dry, the ground is dry at that point, or sometimes we'll pre-water. And that makes it easier to make the little holes to put in the transplants. And then we'll always water them in. In fact, I'll make a little extra sized hole so the plants go in a bit deep and that makes a kind of hollow where the water runs into. You don't need to fill in the hole helps with the water getting to the root ball and go back at least the following day if you can but within two days just to make sure the root ball hasn't dried out before the roots have got into the ground around it so that's a critical period for watering new transplants and if you're sowing seeds you can draw a drill and put, put water in the bottom of the drill to drop the seeds onto wet ground cover them with dry actually and that makes the capillary break and holds the moisture in better uh, there's actually, for example, some carrots here where I did that. <laughs> They're a little bit close to the cucumbers, but just for example. I'm hoping they'll grow through the cucumber there. We'll see what happens. But the most interesting thing is how they emerged in pretty dry conditions, but with enough water at that early stage to get them germinated. And then the other end of a vegetable's life, so you, that's getting it going. And say after a week, you will have should see your new plantings growing noticeably and that's a sign that they you can slacken off on the watering for now because they can explore this ground and they're still only quite small so they won't need a huge amount as they get bigger though and towards the end of their life that's when they need more water and that's very much the case for winter vegetables for example at the moment so brussels sprouts for example <coughs> I'm holding back on watering them because they got established, they're in the ground, they're, they're just chuntering away, growing quite slowly. But they're not in their cropping phase. However, yesterday, it was a really hot day and I looked at my Brussels sprout plants and I, oh my goodness me, I'd never seen them looking so sad actually. They were really wilting, even going quite pale yellow. And th they weren't about to die, but they didn't look good. And so for me, that was a cue and we found time to give them some water and this morning they look a lot better. But I'm not going to go now and water them every day. We, we give them a dose of water, probably leave it another week, see how they go. So that is another part of making these decisions, is keeping an eye on all your plants. Other winter vegetables like, say, beetroot and leeks. Uh, beetroot actually is a really nice example because they, they can often look really dry on a hot sunny afternoon. The leaves are all wilting. Now you look at them evening or following morning and they look okay. What they're doing is they're going to a kind of hibernation mode during a hot afternoon and then they'll pick up 
with growth again, either when it rains or they'll just survive without dying and grow later. Leeks, we're watering after transplanting at the moment. We've put a lot of leeks in the ground over the last two weeks. Once I see that they're looking strong, we'll maybe then switch to watering perhaps once a week if it doesn't rain at all. Again, kind of survival mode. Make sure they survive until autumn when either it's going to rain, it's got to rain. <laughs> um, if it didn't, then somehow we need to find water if we want a worthwhile crop. So it's always that element too. You know, if you, the more water you can give to certain plants at certain times towards the end of their life, fruiting, cropping period, you can increase your harvest that way. And we do that with potatoes. That's a really good example where <clears throat> once you see them flowering, that's really worthwhile watering then. But I don't water potatoes before that point. That's something to bear in mind for next spring. So apply your water judiciously. And other plants, <laughs> like behind me there's some peas which are all looking bright yellow. And that's actually not from lack of water. That's that they've reached the end of their life. That's in essence the pea. Pea is a spring and early summer plant here. And it does its cropping in early summer and, the, and then the plant dies, totally normal. So if you see your pea plants going yellow, and, you, and you, you've been enjoying picking the peas and they're finishing, don't worry, just, you don't need to water at that point, just let them be, same with broad beans, and then you're gonna be taking the plants out very soon. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'll just mention autumn cabbage because we got quite a few here where, again, I'm slacking off on the watering and just maintenance dose, but there's, I want a few earlier cabbage. And so those few, we are giving some water to. So you can use watering as a way of controlling not only your quantity of harvest, but to some extent your timing of harvest. And do practice. It's something that's quite a skill to learn, giving water most effectively and most judiciously. And it's a way of relating closely to your plants as well. Have fun with watering and manage it as best you can.